Okay, uh, good evening uh, leaders. I welcome all of you for this session. Uh, probably I just start by confirming if we can communicate well, if you can see my screen. So either you can give me a thumbs up or you can just uh, send a message just to say you are okay. And then uh, we'll be able to continue from there. So just give me an indication. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Elijah. Yeah, Pastor Florence, JC. I see you are good. Okay, uh, Reverend Kyoko, you're saying you are okay. Uh, we also have someone who is joining us tonight uh, for the first time, that is Anne. Anne, you can give me an indication if you can hear me and you can see my screen. Anne Waidhumbi. If you can hear me, just uh, give an indication. Yeah, otherwise, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us again as we continue with our masterclass. And I trust you had a blessed week. Trust you all well. I know we are living in times that they are tight and uh, there is a lot happening around us. And therefore just uh, having a week and then convening together and being in good health is really something to appreciate God and just be grateful for. Uh, the times we are in, I'm sure uh, there are new experiences uh, and, and I, I, I pray that these are, will be experiences to connect us more and close to God and have that intimate relationship, even as we continue to engage on how to better our leadership. So allow me just to uh, request one of us to open with a word of prayer, and then we'll embark on our discussion tonight. Uh, I will request uh, Reverend Kyoko uh, just to open with a word of prayer. So Reverend Kyoko, if you can hear me and you're in a place where you are okay uh, to speak out, you can unmute and just uh, open with that of prayer. Uh, okay, I, let me see. I don't know if there is a challenge. Uh, how, how about Pastor Elijah? Pastor Elijah, can you hear me, hear me well? Probably unmute and just confirm. No. Yes, oh. today I'm in Nairobi. I'm not in Utah. <laughs> ah, great, great, great. Yeah. Karibu sana. Uh, yeah, that is more better than in our place. <laughs> even uh, we, I can hear you very well, and I trust all of us are able to hear you quite well. Yeah. So I will request uh, I just uh, open with a word of prayer as we, we start. Okay. Our Father and our God, we come before thy presence. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor because of who you are. Father, as we start this class, Father, we pray for your presence to be with us, God. As we discuss and uh, share insights about leadership, Father, we pray that God, you may help us to understand more and be better leaders uh, in our lives and in our families and in our church, wherever you are fellowshipping. Thank you for those who have joined. Father, even those who are trying to join us, Father, I pray for to lead them well. And when they shall join together, we shall glorify and honor your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Good. So uh, how was the book review? I know we had a book review this week. And uh, we also had a self-evaluation uh, this week. Uh, I'm sure this is this week was more of just to acclimatize with our, ourselves with the program. So, in case there are any challenges that uh, you are encountering, uh, please always uh, let me know. Uh, this will be more of our reflection moments, especially the self evaluation. We normally check the comments just to see how we need to adjust and uh, if there are areas that we need to. Uh, look at critically, we'll be noting that from uh, the self-evaluation. 
So uh, if you haven't uh, submitted your self-evaluation, I will share the link uh, again, just to help us uh, be able to finalize that task. Uh, because every week we'll just have uh, the same format. Uh, those of us who submitted, you can, uh, uh, you can attest, it doesn't take long, probably less than five minutes or maybe five minutes will do. So, uh, and those will be your reflection moment. So let's uh, walk through. Uh, tonight we'll have a, a, a short breakout session. So after our first lesson, we'll get into some uh, groups just to be able to reflect on our book review and uh, what we'll be sharing in the book review is just your own summary, not the entire summary, but just maybe one or two points that came out clear. Uh, we'll be able to discuss that among us ourselves, even as we continue to connect more and uh, network. And then after that, we'll have a plenary just to discuss our, our discussions uh, before we embark on the final session, which will be uh, the, the second lesson for tonight. Uh, otherwise, probably uh, I will want to know if uh, Anne, Anne Waithiumbi, if you you are able to unmute and just say hello to the team since you're joining us for the first time. Uh, you feel free to just greet the team. Hello everyone. My name is Anne and I'm born again Christian. I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Um, I'm happy to join you guys. I'm married. And I love the word of God. Somebody introduced, I was not able to join the other, the other leaders from our church because I had a few issues I was trying to sort out, but I, I'm ready to learn and I'm, I'm praying that I'll be, trans, be transformed to be a transformer. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much and, 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 and welcome. Yeah, I'll get in touch with you and just update you where we are so that uh, you'll be at par uh, with the rest of the team. Thank you. Now, yeah, thank you, thank you, and welcome. So, leaders, let's start with uh, just a recap of uh, what we handled last time. Uh, I think the key, uh, the key highlight of lesson one were the the C's that describes a global leader, uh, the core areas that we need to focus on. And uh, for the purposes of just trying to remember them well, uh, a global leader or, or any leader uh, needs to embrace some five C's that we discussed. Uh, so I want us to start from there, uh, just to reflect what were the five C's that we discussed in lesson one. Uh, either just share on the chat, if you can remember one of them, if you can remember two of them, if you can remember all of them, or whatever you can remember, the five C's of a global leader, and that is a holistic growth as a leader. So what were the five C's as a recap, as we embark on our discussions tonight? Uh, so I'll, I'll check on the chat, so feel free to share on the chat. The ones that you can remember, the five C's. Or if you can unmute and also mention, that is also okay. So the five C's, the five C's. I'm trying to check my chat, so let's engage on the chat. Okay, so Pastor Lydia, the first, you're reminding us about conviction. Conviction is very important as a leader. That is conviction uh, that I'm here for a purpose. Uh, there is a slot that I have to fill myself as a leader, and that gives us the, the feeling of my importance and my obligation uh, to fulfill uh, the purpose that God uh, designed for me. Uh, there is compassion. We said leaders, leaders need to show compassion. Uh, that is expressed through love, through care, uh, and also through uh, empathy. Uh, thank you for that reminder. Uh, let me see. I see they are coming, all of them. 
and then we have uh, that's Pastor Elijah. Thank you, James. Competence and clarity. Yeah, we said a leader need to grow in competency. It might be technical skills uh, and also the soft skills. Uh, so the skills, the knowledge, and the experience. That's the competency, and then clarity in terms of vision. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Florence, you're reminding us character, very important. We say that's the backbone of uh, every leader. So every leader can rise or fall based on this backbone, which is character, uh, compassion. We have mentioned that clarity from Ben, compassion, competence. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, uh, Reverend has summarized all of them, competency, clarity, character, compassion, and conviction. Thank you so much for that very rapid uh, it's a rapid uh, response so thank you let's also do the same with the the six eyes the six eyes we said are more of roles of a leader and uh, also actually they are like how do you define a leader you can define a leader through the six eyes six eyes and the one t that we discussed last time they are more of roles of a leader they are more of identity of a leader and they are more of who is really a leader? So let's also reflect on the six eyes uh, on the chat. Uh, Florence already have mentioned one of them. The first eye is influence, uh, influence. Uh, so we are still on lesson one. And then the six eyes, yeah, integrity, uh, impact, those are three. So we have influence, a leader needs to demonstrate influence. And that is, uh, it comes as a result of some other qualities. Uh, then there is the issue of inspiration. There is intelligence. Uh, there is uh, influence, integrity, impact, intelligence, inspiration. Uh -huh. We still have, we still have one more. Is it one more? Yeah integration integration so we said as a leader integration is very important and there is a concept in management uh, referred to as mboa mboa uh, which is uh, management by moving around that's basically what we talk about what refers to as integration that we cannot uh, lead in isolation we need to be part and parcel of uh, the community and the leaders uh, inspiration very important that's a quality that really leads to influence uh, there is intelligence that's growth in terms of our competency. And then there is uh, impact, uh, which leads to transformation and integrity, uh, which is also our backbone and which gives us influence. So thank you so much leaders uh, for that recap. So we moved on to lesson two and lesson two we, we were discussing the leadership gap. And I think we were in consensus that even from the research, from the uh, publications out there, and even from our own experience, indeed, we all confirmed that there is a leadership gap. And there are some key areas that we highlighted, uh, which, which requires attention, or which uh, we feel there is a gap, uh, either from the literatures that we looked at, or even from our own personal experience. There are areas where we feel, indeed, there is a gap. So what were those areas? Uh, maybe it may not be exactly what we discussed, but even from our own experience, because uh, all of us are leaders and I know we all have our own personal experience. So which areas that do we highlight as uh, areas that have a, a gap in terms of leadership? Uh, so maybe we can just mention one or two or just three, uh, either from experience or from what we covered last time as we move on to today's lesson. So I'll just pick maybe two or three areas that we felt there is a gap or which kind of, uh, which kind of qualities do we feel that um, we need to embrace uh, in our leadership. Uh, and I think Anne, even Anne, this one from your own experience, you can feel free to share uh, where areas that we feel there is a gap or, pro or probably areas that we need to focus more uh, as leaders. Uh, Florence, leading employees. Yeah, we said there are so many challenges in the workplace environment. And because I think we have more of managers, few of leaders, and this really 
uh, is a challenge because we tend also to look more probably on short term rather than long term. So leaders who are able to lead the employees effectively. Uh, thank you, Florence, for that. I can pick two more. Just two more. Uh, leading volunteers, yeah, leading volunteers. Yeah, I, I, this is true, leading volunteers. It, was, it wasn't there in our discussion, but it's really, it's a gap. Uh, even in the church setup, these are more of, of volunteers in the church setup. So leading volunteers. Let me pick one more. Just one more. And I'm very grateful for your engagement. Leading employees and then change. We talked about leaders who are able to lead change. We are in season of rapid change. And therefore, as a leader, that capability of discerning the moments, uh, being able to adapt uh, to new changes, uh, being able to what we call, later on I'll be introducing you to that, what we call ambidextrous leadership. Ambidextrous leadership, a leader that is able to use both hands to lead. Uh, basically, it, that means that a leader that is able to see now and see future, a leader that is able to take care of short term and still be able to, uh, not to, to maintain focus on long term because of the rapid change. So those are the issues that we discussed last time. And uh, I, I'm ho I, I hope now, Anne, at least you have a clue and all of us have been able to refresh our memory from where we started. So today we'll be looking at lesson three and lesson four. Uh, you're still laying the foundation because uh, we are in level one and uh, level one, it's more of uh, just lay the foundation before we really engage on the core of leadership. We'll be engaging on the core of leadership in level three. So level one is more of self-awareness and just understanding our uh, ourselves, trying to get our identity uh, as leaders. So it's more of um, just laying the foundation before we really engage on core issues of leadership later on in level three. So we'll be looking today uh, at a, a very important topic uh, leadership development models. How do we develop ourselves as leaders? Uh, what areas do we need to uh, focus our attention more uh, as leaders? So this is what we refer to as leadership development models. Which model do you need to adapt uh, so that you have a holistic uh, growth? And uh, let me start with this quote by John Maxwell. Uh, John Maxwell says that the single biggest way to impact an organization or even an individual is to focus on uh, leadership development. There is no organization that rises beyond its leadership. And even at individual level, there is no life that is productive beyond the leadership that an individual offers, offers to him or herself. And that is what we refer to as self-leadership. So our leadership is the lead, is the lead either uh, in terms of uh, an organization, and also is a lead in terms of individuals, uh, capacity to be able to grow and, and, and even succeed. And uh, Robin Sharma also uh, reinforced this point of uh, personal development. And he says the safest way to triple your success is to double your investment in personal development. And I think this is very, very important uh, each organization, I've tried to look at the global organizations that are doing quite well, uh, like uh, probably Facebook, Google, Apple, and these big giants. And you will realize that one quality, one aspect that they are so much concerned uh, with is the issue of developing employees. Uh, and that is what has lifted them to the level of success that, that they are flowing at. So this is the, the core of a leader and is the core of an organization. And therefore, I think the challenge for tonight, this will be the challenge for tonight, not really the challenge for the lesson, but just a, 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 an opening challenge, just a challenge to guide our, our, our reflection as we discuss about this topic. The challenge is this, what programs or activities are you engaging in currently? for your personal development? What programs or activities are you engaging in currently for your personal development? Think about 
that question. Just think about that question. Just reflect about that question at your own personal level. Uh, you may not answer this, uh, but, but uh, uh, just, just think about it. Think about it. If you need to note it down, if you need to reflect on something on this, uh, just think about it uh, as, a, as a leader. Is there a particular program? Uh, maybe this can be one of them, but maybe beyond this, is there a particular program? Are there some particular activities that you are engaging in currently for your personal development? And this is intentional, something that you have planned out and something that you are working with uh, as a leader. It might be in an area of education, might be probably professional development. Uh, it might be a research or life skills programs, might be workshops, seminars, conferences. Probably you are reading a book, you are following some, uh, some series of videos or trainings, might be a journal. All these uh, aspects you might be a network. Uh, there are particular aspects uh, that uh, are there to ground us as leaders. So that's your question, just to reflect as we discuss. So we look at uh, three uh, leadership development models. One of them is the iceberg. And then we look at 8 to 20, a leadership development model. And then finally, we look at the success triangle. So we may integrate them as we discuss. They may not be just uh, uh, separated in our discussion, but we'll integrate them as we look at at this. So without commitment to planned personal growth, any growth that occurs is circumstantial rather than intentional. So we can grow on intention or we can grow through circumstance. And I, I believe probably COVID has pushed us to a certain level. It was more of a, a circumstantial growth. Uh, maybe some of us have grown, maybe some of us, I don't know how the experience has been, but there are many people who have shifted, who have probably uh, turned around their life based on the circumstance. Some maybe have had to go back to school. Maybe some, they, they lost their jobs. You have to engage on something else. You have to develop something else in you. So either we can grow on intention or we can grow uh, based on circumstance. But we are saying personal growth is too important to be left to circumstance. It has to be deliberate. We have to plan it out and then we have to judicially execute the plan uh, so that we are more of proactive in our growth. And as we plan it out, there's a leadership development plan here or, or, or roadmap uh, that gives us some areas that we need to graduate in terms of uh, our, our leadership development. So we need to grow in terms of leading self, uh, leading people and leading organizations. So in terms of leading self, uh, this is more of developing personal mastery and authentic leadership. Basically, this is where we have issues of self-awareness. And we'll look at this later on, self-awareness. Undertaking a 360 feedback process, where I look at the people that I'm leading, uh, the people that are leading me, and the people that we are leading together. So it's a 360. Uh, those above me, those below me, and those around me. Uh, those, those people are able to give me a glimpse of, uh, of myself, uh, but that's just one tool. There are so many other tools that we look at. Uh, leading self, the issues of values, the issues of purpose and core beliefs, and also connection to and articulation of personal vision. So that's leading self. And that's how we graduate to leading people. And uh, when we get to leading people, uh, here we look at uh, developing relationship, mastery and interpersonal excellence. So collaboration, partnership, and communication skills, uh, issues of conflict, negotiations, and then emotional intelligence, uh, managing people and developing their potential, as well as constructive dialogue and feedback. So leading self, it's more of, you're starting to look outward. Uh, leading self, it was more of inward. But as we graduate now, we are looking more at having mastery in issues of relationship and in the personal uh, excellence. Then we graduate still to leading the organization. So what is critical? What are key aspects uh, at leading organization? So leaders will note that uh, developing high performance culture is one of the key aspects. 
And this is where we have issues of visioning, uh, strategy development or strategic leadership, uh, how to lead change. Uh, we start thinking about how do we maintain uh, or grow sustainable uh, uh, performance or just to ensure that we have sustainable performance. And also building a culture of commitment and trust and systems thinking. So at leading the organization is more of system thinking, is more of how do we now look at uh, attaining uh, a culture of high performance. So uh, this is more of a roadmap in terms of how we need to look at leadership development uh, in, as part of the introduction. Now, the first leadership development model is what we refer to as iceberg leadership development model. And iceberg, just, just not remember or just visualize an iceberg. It, it normally has two, two uh, areas. There is the top, which is the tip, and there is the bottom, which is the core. So the tip is like 10%, uh, uh, and then the bottom is like probably 90%, uh, roughly. So in terms of uh, personal development, uh, uh, based on iceberg leadership development model, it, uh, it stipulates though, that a leader needs to grow or, or uh, in leadership. I just want to contextualize in terms of leadership that a leader needs to grow both in hard skills and also in soft skills. So, and the hard skills is at the tip. So this is probably, let's say 90 to 80% or 80 to 90%, uh, sorry, uh, 10 to 20%. That is what co contributes to a holistic growth. So hard skills is about 10 to 20%. The teachable, the measurable abilities, the technical, probably the professional skills, uh, based on your line, that also gives you influence in terms of leadership. But again, when we look at uh, the other aspect is the soft skills, the traits that uh, make you a good leader. So these are the catalyst of hard skills. And uh, if you just uh, observe, like uh, most of the organizations uh, nowadays are, tend, are, are trying to focus more on the hard skills, uh, on the soft skills, because probably if they are undertaking an interview, realize most people may have almost same qualities in terms of tech, uh, technical skills or professional skills. Now what differentiates is the soft skills. And that is the uh, 80 to 90%. And what are these? These are issues of leadership. These are issues of communication. Uh, they are issues of emotional intel intelligence. There are issues of social intelligence, integrity, character, uh, uh, probably people who are able to relate. Yeah. So this is the, the base. And, and, I, and I think as you can see, it really constitutes a lot because uh, this is a big chunk of uh, the skills. So uh, basically we are saying the iceberg mirrors uh, it mirrors that concept of competency development just in, uh, in line with those two particular areas. Yeah, so I take care of the both areas, the observable behaviors, the practices, and uh, well, basically the hard skills. And then I still need to take care of the beliefs, the attitude, the values, uh, the philosophies, uh, among other aspects that we have been able to mention here. So, from the manual, uh, we are saying leadership is a function that requires, and this is in line again with uh, what we have looked at, uh, the will to lead. And how, where do we place the lead to lead in the two areas? Is it on the soft or the hard? The hard or the soft, the will to lead. Basically, this is on the soft. The knowledge, where do we place the knowledge in, in the two areas? Uh, basically, the knowledge will be uh, part of the hard skills, but again, it can it can cut across. Uh, then we have the skills. Maybe it can be more technical skills. This we place them on the on the upper, and then the sacrifice to lead or the trade off. The sacrifice to lead. This one also comes uh, on the lower side. So if you have your manual, if you have your manual uh, on page. On page 15, on page 15, 
page 15. Are we there? Page 15. So this leadership is a function that requires, so that is where we fill these uh, four aspects that I've highlighted on page 15. So either you can fill them now, or you can uh, look at the answers uh, on page uh, 20 later on and just fill the blank spaces. Okay, so I hope you are together. If you're together, you can just give me a thumbs up just to know that we are flowing together and we are following through. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Lucy. So those are the, the, the functions of a leader. So we can categorize this into three. Again, we are talking about the mindset, uh, the heart set, and also the skill set. Uh, the mindset, more of now where we have the soft, the soft, and also the hard. And then we have the heart set, we have the will to lead, the sacrifice, and then, then the skill set. Uh, those are the other three categories that we can talk about. So um, still on the iceberg leadership development model, so the tip represents, this is what I was trying to gauge from our discussion in the previous slide. The skill set is a 20%, 10 to 20%. It's good, and good, but not enough. Uh, it's more of education, more of experience, more of skills. Uh, but I think we need more, more, more than that, because that forms 20%. Uh, and that is what we can classify as a skill set. The base, uh, that's the essence of a person, is the essence of a leader. And actually, if we are to define a leader, we normally try uh, tend to define a leader based on the essence, based on the 80%. I don't know if you agree with this, uh, but mostly we'll tend to define a leader, not really in terms of the, uh, the hard skills, but in terms of the soft skills. And maybe that will be our discussion. Uh, on, on, on this, is this true? And how do we really define a leader based on the hard skill or based on the, on the soft skills? Just think about that, note it down. It will inform our, our discussion. And the essence of a person, this is the thinking styles, the motivation for leadership, the character, uh, the social role, uh, the motives, yeah? The, the attitude, the perception, the values, the, the beliefs, the principles, all these uh, are, are the essence of, of a leader or the essence of a person. And that is what constitutes the biggest chunk. It's like the core because that forms the 80% uh, in terms of a holistic uh, personal development. Okay. So if we bring this together with uh, the success triangle, basically the success triangle, uh, emphasizes or, or, or it highlights key areas of growth. If I'm growing as a leader, there are key areas that I need to focus on. It can apply to leadership or it can apply to any other area of uh, personal growth. So for me to be successful as a leader, I need to grow in knowledge, I need to grow in skills, and I need to grow in attitude. I need to grow in knowledge, now knowledge is on the, it's the tip of the iceberg. I need to grow in skills, and skills, again, is at the tip of the iceberg, uh, and I need to grow in attitude, and this is now uh, on the core of the iceberg. Yeah, so the difference between successful and successful leaders or people is majorly on attitude or our thinking style or the essence of a person. Uh, yeah, so our attitude, how I think about myself and how I think about others, and how I think about leadership. Uh, Zig Ziglar said your attitude, uh, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Basically saying how far we go uh, is dependent on how I think about myself, how I think about the role, and how I think about the people that I'm leading, if I can contextualize that in leadership, not just in terms of how well I'm equipped in terms of skills. Skills are very important, but uh, they need to be boosted. Uh, with the other aspects uh, that we have highlighted. Yeah, so the success triangle. So if you're talking about knowledge, what are we talking about? Uh, this might be knowledge maybe in our professional areas and also knowledge in terms of how to lead. 
So the, the, probably there are theories, there are basics, there is the information, the facts within our context, uh, and, and, and basically, uh, uh, probably the, the, the science, the art, and all that. So that is the area of knowledge. Uh, about the skills, it might be issues of management, issues of reasoning, issues of communication, issues of interpersonal skills, uh, issues of uh, goal settings, amongst others. How about attitudes? What do I need to focus on? Uh, maybe the issues of self-motivation, uh, integrity, uh, issues of uh, commitment, uh, cooperation, uh, basically those intrinsic issues or aspects that really defines a person. Uh, one of the others, uh, this is an American author, Tommy, Toby, uh, Tony Robbins, has written a book uh, about the psychology of a winner, and he says that success in life is 80% psychology and 20% mechanics. What you do does not matter if you are not in the right mindset. And maybe that quote really uh, tries to qualify why we are putting more weight on the core or the lower part of the iceberg, because that is what can sink a person or can lift up uh, a person. So just that the, those are the two leadership development models. And then the final one is that the 20 leadership development model. Again, this applies in so many areas, but uh, this is a concept that has been described uh, by one person referred to as Pareto, and uh, it's normally referred to as the Pareto principle. Pareto principle that states that for many outcomes, roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of the causes. There is always the vital few that gives us the maximum impact. I think this will be one of the most important message for this uh, lesson. There is always, all of us, there is those vital few, those few qualities, those few aspects, uh, those the strengths uh, that if we focus on them, they give us maximum impact, yeah? So the vital few that gives us the maximum impact. So according to him, roughly 80% of the outcomes come from 20% of the causes or the 80% of the effects come out of 20% of the courses. So I'll give examples just to help us appreciate this. Uh, there's another author, uh, Van Kahl, uh, in his book, The Making of Exceptional Performance. Uh, he talks about performance or leadership. I, I, I contextualized in terms of leadership. So to him, he says 80% uh, attitude to other job or a role. Basically, he's saying that performance is 80% uh, or is driven by 80% uh, attitude to other job or a role. And I think that's also important for leadership. So leadership is driven by 80% attitude toward my role as a leader. Again, he continues to say that 20% skills, knowledge and experience. So performance is 20% skills, knowledge and experience. So if you can look at, you will see that all these models are more interrelated. Uh, and uh, they're trying to just drive us to this concept that we are looking at today. So an individual performance or even a leader's performance is more closely linked to how they perceive and describe their job than what they know or what they can do. Yeah. I think we relate that statement that an individual performance is more closely linked to how they perceive and describe their role than what they know or what they can do. Maybe even in the work environment, try to think about this and put it in different contexts. And this is like uh, what really defines uh, our drive. If you find people who are more uh, self-driven and very passionate, uh, this might be the, the underlying factor. So the performance is more closely linked, linked to how I perceive and describe my role uh, than what I know or what I do uh, within that particular function. So attitude directly impacts performance and job satisfaction. Attitude basically impacts our leadership. Uh, 
uh, and also our satisfaction as leaders. So uh, the 820 rule, we are saying that leadership quality is 80% personal essence. Again, we're just uh, re-echoing that and 20% skills or knowledge base. So an effective leader, I need to prioritize 20% effort. There's a slight shift here. Uh, an effective leader needs to prioritize 20% effort or inputs or the vital few on development of skills, knowledge, action, activities, strength, attitude, habits, and all that, that gives 80% effect. So I think as leaders tonight, probably the discussion will be, what are the vital few that I need to grow in that gives me the maximum impact? That's it's more of a summary of what we are discussing in this lesson. What are those vital few? It might be the skills that I feel this gives me maximum impact. It might be knowledge, it might be maybe the strength that I've identified might be some habits, might be the values, uh, what, what, whatever they are, the vital few that if I need, if I focus on them, then they give me the maximum impact. And people who operate like this, one, they're self-driven, two, they are more impactful, and three, uh, they, they, they are more, of, they, are, they feel satisfied because they are, they are aligned to their area of, of strength. So effective leadership balance, we require 20% effort that yields 80% impact and results. So we need to leverage our strength to maximize performance and satisfaction. And uh, I think this is a message that we take it for ourselves and also cascade it around us. So to summarize, I'll give you other areas where the 820 rule applies just to help us uh, appreciate this. On the slides, you can see 20% uh, of your effort gives gives you 80% of your results. Uh, this will help you see your most productive tasks. So 20% effort needs to give me 80% results if I am aligned in my area of, of strength. What are the other examples in real life examples? Just look at down there, there are other examples. 20% of customers bring 80% of revenue and those who are vital few customers, very important. 80% uh, of work is completed by 20% of the team. I think we have experienced this. 80% uh, of complaints come from 20% of customers and, and, and other examples that have been highlighted there. So we can apply this in different areas. Uh, I will conclude by just mentioning, I think we have talked so much about attitude and I think we just need to mention something about attitude and uh, probably just to appreciate and help us to look at the same level. We are saying it's a set of emotions, beliefs, and behaviors. Maybe put toward a particular person or even towards a role or a thing uh, which results from an experience or bringing and powerfully influences behavior. So attitude powerfully influences behavior and uh, it also defines personality. And I remember I said that in most cases, we'll try to define a leader by the personal essence more than probably by the skill set and knowledge set and the experience. That's our takeaway and our discussion. So attitude, there are different types, positive, negative, neutral. So I'll just give you a highlight of these attitudes. Uh, so we have the positive attitude, uh, keeping a positive mindset and thinking about the greater good uh, despite the situation or the circumstance. And Leaders or people who have a positive attitude are more collaborative and complementary. They're more collaborative and complementary, and they're very resilient. Yeah, they, they, they are able to sustain, uh, uh, sustain their leadership despite the challenges, and they are confident, uh, more sincere, and also determined. And someone said a positive attitude brings strength energy, motivation, and initiative. So a leader of positive attitude or even a person of positive attitude. This is the negative attitude. This is the kind of a person that ignores the good things in life and only think about what, why things cannot work. They're often competitive and comparative. Less resilient, sometimes they can get angry very fast and also frustrated. 
And there's another quote here, I didn't indicate the source, uh, a bad attitude is like a flat tire, you can't go anywhere until you change it. Yeah, so negative attitude, and then there's the neutral attitude, uh, neither here nor there, generally tend to ignore problems in life, feels disconnected quite often, they never feel the need to change themselves as they can simply live with the way they are. So my attitude is based on how you treat me. So they are neither here nor there. And uh, I think in leadership, this is, uh, this is not good because uh, such leaders are not able to really uh, propel people forward. Yeah, especially when it comes to issues of decision making. And then there's the second attitude. This more of a more powerful negative state of mind and destroys the image of every element that reflects in the mind. It's much more aggressive. Uh, it's deep rooted within a person's uh, personality. And uh, Scott Hamilton said, the only disability in life is a bad attitude. So in summary, we say that people may hear your words, but they feel your attitude. You at, our attitude is more louder uh, than probably the words. We might be saying something, but the attitude is giving another, uh, another message. And Miles Monroe say, true leadership is an attitude that naturally inspires and motivates others. And it comes from an internalized discovery about ourselves. So attitude reflects leadership and leadership is practiced not so much in words as in attitude and in actions. So we are saying this, that uh, attitude defines a leader's personality and generally a leader's attitude will either be inspiring or depressing. People in general prefer to stick around leaders with positive vibration, who motivates them, who inspire them, who are able to uh, stretch them. And bad or good attitude has the power to influence people's thoughts and behavior. So as we continue to grow as leaders, let's embrace the leadership balance uh, and a priority diagram, uh, more of a summary of what we have discussed. We are saying I need to look at what are my 20%, the vital few that will give me the maximum impact. Need to have a balance there. Again, I will look at what are my 20% of courses, actions, activities that will be able to give me maximum effect or impact or influence. So I need to prioritize those uh, those vital, uh, vital few, and that is more of the leadership balance. So successful leaders need to embrace this, uh, the positive mental attitude, which is the catalyst, the base that catalyzes the tip of the iceberg. And that is what really uh, defines a leader. And that is what eventually at the end of it all will give us maximum impact as leaders. So our leadership challenge for today, uh, which I will share, I'll share. Uh, as a leader, identify and prioritize your 20% skills, knowledge, attitude, habits, or the strength that leads to 80% effect, impact, influence, or inspiration. Then we need to focus on those areas that we leverage on, gives us satisfaction, uh, give us, gives us uh, self, makes us to be self-driven, but above all, gives us maximum impact. The 20% that gives us 80%. That's our summary of this discussion tonight. So I'll pause there. I know I've talked quite a lot, but I just want us to probably reflect on this, on what we have discussed. So we'll have uh, some groups. And then in the groups, uh, we'll have 10 minutes. Within those 10 minutes, we just want to reflect on two, two aspects or two issues. One is uh, what were the highlights in the book review? So we'll share among us ourselves what came out strong to you as an, uh, as an individual, strong in uh, our discussion. Uh, so we share and then we'll probably summarize just three aspects that we'll share together when we come back. So you'll have someone who will represent that group when we come back. And then we'll also discuss uh, what, were, what are the key issues that we have highlighted in our discussion tonight? So what is coming out strong? Or what is your takeaway uh, in, our, in our discussion tonight? So again, we'll just, when we come back, we'll have a summary of that uh, in those two areas. 
So I'll make the groups. Just allow me to make the groups. I'll make the groups. Uh, we'll have uh, three groups. Yeah, three groups. So, and then we'll give you 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. Yeah, so 10 minutes. So once I open the groups, they will see somewhere where it's indicated join, just click join. And then it will take you to your uh, room, breakout room. Uh, just take, get engaged in the discussions. And then after the discussions, you'll be able to come back. Uh, for room one and room two, I know there is a, an, an alumni there. So uh, maybe, but the alumni is, may not have to lead. Anybody can just take up the discussion and guide the team. So are we good up to there? Maybe it's always good to confirm if everybody is present so that we we send, we send don't send people to the groups and then we realize maybe there are people who are having challenges. So I may need just to do a check that you, uh, you can hear me well as I, I, I release you to the groups. So <clears throat> Anne, you are good up to there? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you so much. How about Ben? And hello, Ben. Can confirm if you are here. We are together. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you so much, Ben. Uh, Reverend Kyoko. Yes, we are together. But uh, how do I go join the group? Uh, once I open, it will give you some uh, a pop up message will appear. Okay. Yeah, and then you'll just click on join. Thank you. Okay, I know Mwangi. Mwangi, I, I know you are good. Uh, Mwangi is an yes. yes, I am. Thank you so much, Mwangi. We also have Eunice Njuhi. Eunice, how are you? Uh, Eunice is also an alumni. Uh, Florence, uh, you're good on your end? I'm okay. Asante. Uh, how about Lucy? Yes, I'm good. Asante, and then we have James. I'm good to go. Asante Sana, and then we have Pastor Elijah. I'm good. Asante, I'm good. Asante, Asante, Asante. So let me open the groups and then just click on join. Okay, so you can join the groups. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Eh? Hi. Yes, I, 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 there is Anne is a uh, first time today. She didn't have the materials. Mm. Uh, so she, maybe she need she needs to be provided with the materials and then probably she can pick from there. Then Florence, I think she can speak on herself, but uh, she was not able to do anything. Eh? Mm. But I would request that she talks. Eh? Florence Karibwe. As for me, I did not make it to do the assignment on the book review. Okay. Yes. Okay, so maybe from the team, how are the reflection about our today's discussion? I don't know if you discussed anything on uh, today's engagement. No, we did not tackle that. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Bernard was encouraging us to move on. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, okay, when I realized they, they had not done it, I just encouraged them uh, to develop that culture of reading, researching, mm -hmm. uh, so that, that they get to know more about the program that we are uh, engaging in. And uh, they are very positive, and I have encouraged them to push on. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's a committed team. They are, they are committed leaders, so to say. So okay. for, for Anne, for Anne, maybe you'll organize for her to get the material for, from the from the administrative part of it. 
Okay. Uh, so thank you, uh, Mr. Mwangi. Thank you, Florence and Anne. Uh, I think we'll be doing this almost in every session, uh, just to reflect on the book review and also the discussions that we have had. So I think as Mr. Mwangi has noted, uh, and also that is part of just boosting our understanding on the concepts and uh, the materials that we are engaging with. So uh, let's move uh, in line with what you have agreed and what you have discussed as a group. I'll remove, I'll move on to room two. Room two, uh, we had Ben and Lucy, uh, Ben and Lucy, so you can unmute and just uh, share your deliberations. Um, yes, Mr. Kerry and the group. And we, we were uh, about the, the past lesson. Uh, I did not uh, submit my notes because I was somewhere where there was no internet at all at all. So I've just arrived today from that place. But today, Lucy and I, we have discussed some of the, th the highlights that you have given us. And we have said that unless one you have to start with self leading self first you need to know yourself first so that you can lead others because there is no way that i can be a leader and yet i myself am crooked my ways are not right and i don't know what to do as a leader we have discussed about that one and we have said we need to know about ourselves first so that we can lead others and other organizations and then we have gone uh, to the issue of the hard skills and the soft skills. The issue of communication, listening, and emotional intelligence, as uh, we have talked about emotional intelligence, we need to, uh, the emotionally, we need actually to be sober when we talk about the, the other things and the peoples around us. We need to, to be good listeners and good communicators because unless we are good communicators and listeners, we will do nothing about, about any, you can't be a good leader in that case. And then the hard skills is that we need, we need um, out the technical part of the leadership because, uh, and the professionalism about the skills that we need uh, to lead people. The things like um, you have to maybe as a, if I'm a leader of, an, of, a, of a, let's say an institution, I need to understand the institutions, the, the laws and the, 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 the laws and the, the, the regulations of a certain institution so that I can lead others. I need to be the, the head of them so that when I tell them something, they don't think I'm making my own things. And then we have talked also about the leadership requirements of uh, the things that you, you gave us, the, the will to lead. You need to have the will to lead unless you, 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 you feel like you, you, it's about intrinsic, about the, the, I read about that book about intrinsic leadership, that is self leadership. You believe that this is the way to go and this is not the way to go. You need to check about the, you need to know if, 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 if you have that leadership in you, you need to bring it out, yeah? You don't need to form things that can go around others, the knowledge and the skills of the certain institutions and the sacrifice to lead. You need to give time to give to sacrifice you need to have a, to take time and and teach your people the way they should go and then the issue of uh, the 20 and the 80 percent iceberg that one i think i need to read, read it again but now i think lucy has actually explained a bit of it to me and i i think uh, she can be a good teacher and I'll, uh, i think i'll allow her to talk about those things now lucy please <laughs> Yeah, and Lucy, probably you can also mention something on the book review. I know you submitted your review. So if you're just able to mention just something in brief, that will be okay. Okay, briefly on the book review, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as a leader, you're supposed to, as Ben has said, you're supposed to lead from, from the heart. You first of all, commit yourself to lead, not necessarily because of what you'll get in return, but the passion inside you and the philosophy of why you are doing what you're doing should be the driving factor. Uh, and of course, as a leader, you need to, to have a balance, be able to, to let go of those things that will not 
build the group or the organization you are leading and embrace that which is going to impact other people and inspire them. Because as we have learned tonight, people would love to hang around somebody or would like to be led by somebody who is able to inspire them and to impact their lives. And uh, maybe just a few points because I think Ben has touched on most of the things. Uh, in leadership, it's more of the attitude more than any other thing. And uh, the positive attitude is key because people do not want to be led by somebody who is always negative and who, who has the fear of the unknown as much as it is there. But as a leader, you should be able to come out and uh, inspire people that yes, it can be done, it is possible. And uh, I, I would only maybe give that example of a group of sheep led by uh, a lion would will deliver or will get to the goal as opposed to a group of lions led by a sheep. So I believe as a leader, you need to be the lion, but uh, not the lion to, to supervise. I think that is the key word not to have the attitude of supervising, but the attitude of wanting to see these people grow and impacting them and leaving a mark, knowing that they can also go ahead and bring other people. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much, uh, Room 2, for the insights. Uh, finally, let's uh, listen in from Room 3. Yeah, room three. Room three, we had uh, Pastor Elijah, we had James, and also we had uh, Reverend Kyoko. So maybe whoever took note can uh, unmute and just share your deliberation. I'm sorry, I left before uh, I, I gave my our resolutions. Number one, we have discussed that uh, in chapter one uh, on that book uh, that uh, purpose-driven leaders uh, succession, succession is a success to them. In other words, that uh, when they leave people working more better than themselves in every work, that uh, that's their joy. And uh, we have seen that uh, leadership also starts with identity, identifying uh, yourself, first of all, knowing yourself, and also knowing the mission that, uh, and, uh, that you are working your goals towards that. And understanding yourselves is more important than the way we you spoke about uh, you know, self-leadership or leadership starts first First of all, with you, so that you can be able to influence uh, that are the greatest achievement. It's not how much well we learn and uh, when we are strong, and, and even sacrificing. even sacrificing our own lives and uh... we seem to be losing our uh, pastor Elijah I, I don't know if uh, it's my end or, or the others also you can't hear him well yeah, he's he's getting lost. Oh, we can't hear yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe if Pastor Kyoko or uh, James, any comment you may want to make uh, just to conclude that discussion. Yeah, okay. Uh, what I need to say is uh, to to say some of the things uh, he has uh, concluded. And uh, most of the things we have discussed here 
we have said about chapter one summary of chapter one. Summary, can you get me clear? Yes, uh, Reverend Kiyoko, we can, we can yeah. hear you. Okay, okay, okay. We have seen in summary, in chapter one, we, we have seen about the leadership or the true leadership begins from within, that is from within yourself, then it gets to others. When you get what you have, then you transfer it to other people and you share your vision and the purpose so that you may fulfill the mission in life. Uh, we also said about succession, what has said, uh, Elijah has talked about. We said about succession. We said succession is success, meaning uh, when you succeed or when, when you allow people to take over from you and you raise a better leadership, it's not a failure. You have succeeded in passing on the mantle to other leaders, so you have achieved the goal. So succession is a succession is a success. And then uh, we said, uh, what else have we said? Uh, we have mentioned something to do with this finishing well. We say the good leader is the one who has finished very well. And uh, that one, it's okay. It, it matters how you are finished. And as a leader, you have to finish very well. A leader is the one who sacrifices. You, you sacrifice for others. I think those are some of the things we've mentioned in chapter one. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Kiyoko and the team. Yeah, okay. so we, we appreciate. Uh, we'll continue doing this so that uh, also we continue to uh, integrate and just continue to know each other as we share knowledge and experience in teams. So allow me just to do a summary now uh, by looking at lesson four. This will be our concluding lesson for tonight. And uh, that's on page, uh, just check for you the page. On page 21, page 21 of the manual. And as we start this discussion, uh, I will display some leaders and uh, I will request you share your one word about these leaders, just one word. Uh, about the leaders that I will display on the screen. And since there are a number of them, maybe I'll just pick a, a sample a few, one word from uh, a few of us. So what is your one word about the leader on the screen now? Your one word about this leader? I'm sure we can identify this leader. So what's your one word about this leader? On the chat. You can use the chat platform. I'll sample maybe two or three. Uh, yeah, effective, visionary. Uh, huh, effective, visionary. So it's more of a positive. Uh, reaction from the two that I've shared. Yeah. How about uh, the other leader there? How about the other leader? Uh, I'm sure we can also identify that leader, that's Nelson Mandela, the president, former president of uh, South Africa, one word about this leader. Uh, yeah, servant leader. Mm -hmm. Servant leader, I can take maybe one more or two more. I think there's quite a lot to say about some of these leaders. Okay, uh, focused, focused, yeah, that's Ben. Okay, how about the gentleman there? Okay, sacrificial leader, 
and selfless leader. I'm sure that is about uh, about uh, uh, Nelson Mandela. How about the other leader? The other leader there. Maybe you can identify that is a uh, Hitler. That is Hitler. What is your one word about uh, this leader? Your one word. I don't know how much we know about uh, Hitler, but uh, maybe from our history. Uh, what is our one word about this leader here? I can take again two uh, reactions. Yeah, let me take two. Uh, no nonsense leader, that's uh, Mwangi. Eunice, you are saying brutal, very true. Uh, he's known by, uh, he's one of the person who championed the movement of uh, uh, eliminating the Jews. And I think about 6 million were killed. So brutal, uh, no nonsense leader, that's true. How about the lady, the lady? The leader there, one word about her. I'm very sure again, we can identify this leader. Uh, passionate, passionate, wow. Uh, Florence and Mr. Moengi, the same, passionate, passionate. I like that. Uh -huh. uh, maybe one more quality. Again, this leader, I know there's a lot we can say about her. Just one more. Humble, yeah, thank you, Eunice. How about the leader now on the screen there? The second president of Kenya. One word about him. One word about the leader on the screen now. Yeah, as we look at the history, we remember what they did, and then we're able to share just one word uh, about them. One word about we yeah, are misguided focus. That's from Wangi. I take one more. Okay, just one more, just one more. As I move on to the next leader. Uh, one more, I'm just waiting for one more. I'm sure we know this man and uh, we know what he did from maybe whatever perspective you look at it. Uh, yeah, Pastor Elijah, you are saying unquestionable. Yeah, I, I think some leaders we are trying to uh, think about so much on what to say about them. Uh, maybe for others, you really not need to think so much. It's just flowing naturally. Uh, I don't know if that is the experience from uh, your side. How about him? The, that is, uh, we have moved on to Zimbabwe. How about him? What is your one word about him? Just two, just two for the interest of time. Wow, just two. Uh, Dictorio, yeah, Mr. Mwangi, uh, selfish, dictator, yeah. And then uh, finally, before the, the final one, there's another lady there. Uh, one word about this lady, we know her, uh, Wangari Mazai. Wangari Mazai, bold. Bold, very true. She's bold. And then finally, she was passionate. Uh, she was aggressive. She was aggressive. 
Now, finally, finally, what's your one word about this leader on the screen now? Yeah, again, Pastor Leader, you're saying visionary. Uh, that's, uh, I believe, it's Wangari Madai. How about the leader now on the screen? Are you able to identify that leader? And what is your one word about that leader? Maybe first we can identify that leader. Who is that leader? Are we able to identify the leader now on the screen? And what is our one word about that leader? Yeah, so I just wanted us to reflect on, uh, yeah, saying a non reverend Kyoko, very true. Uh, for this context, maybe we can replace our photo there and share our one word. What is the one word about you or about myself? If we had interacted more, we would have shared our one word about each other. But since we have not interacted more among us ourselves, uh, maybe the challenge will be you yourself to share just your one word about yourself or your one word about a summary about your life. If your photo flashes uh, on our screens, uh, what one word will come out uh, about you? Yeah, just the way we have looked at some of the readers here, it has been positive. Some of them, it's the, the one word is negative. Some of them we have struggled even to get the one word. Uh, and I think we have the opportunity uh, now as leaders. So what is your one word? You may not share that word, but I think just note it down. That will be your one word about yourself. So uh, the four leadership, uh, the core four leadership, uh, I know you're not doing well on time, I'm in between if to stop there or if to continue. Uh, because I know again, because of time, we normally want, like respecting time. So, but since the interactions are very important, we felt we just needed to engage and have some interaction. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, sh should I stop there for tonight? I, I think maybe I just need to pause there. Uh, so that we can reflect on what we have shared. Uh, do we agree on that? Do we agree on that? We can post there for tonight. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let's post there. Uh, I know there is so much that we need to digest and uh, we, we actually don't just like uh, rushing through uh, for the purposes of uh, just uh, covering some lessons. Uh, but we need to internalize and uh, reflect on what we have gone through. So as we close, I will request that uh, please let's undertake our book review because that will inform our discussions uh, during the sessions. Two, uh, let's also undertake the weekly self-evaluation. So if you had not undertaken the weekly self-evaluation, uh, the link is still there. <clears throat> so just click on the link. Uh, it will take you to a form. Uh, put your name and then just, uh, the rest is just ticking, ticking, ticking. And then you will write some comments there and submit. Uh, so, but if you have any challenge, you can uh, uh, side chat me and I'll be able to come on board and help you. So the book review, uh, the weekly self-evaluation uh, are very important just for our own personal reflection. Otherwise, I want to appreciate all of you for uh, turning up and just for engaging and also for enriching the discussions tonight. So unless there is a comment, there is a, uh, an observation, there is a question, I may want to post there for tonight. Yes, yeah, so if there is a question, there is a comment, uh, just feel free to probably just unmute and mention or just share on the chat. Uh, as we close in the next one minute. So we are good. We are good. Uh, so we can pause there.
can pause there for tonight. Uh, please let's unmute and share the words of grace tonight together as we as we bid each other good night. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be us now and forevermore. Good night all. Good night all. And uh, Ben, I've noted your comment. I will share the recording. For this session, I'll share what we have discussed. Uh, I'll share this particular recording by tomorrow. Thank you so much, leaders, and have a blessed night. Oh, thank you. Blessed night.